guys, today I want to talk about five things that you can do to help you see more defined abdominal muscles that have nothing to do with exercise or restricting your diet. Here's the truth of the matter when it comes to getting a defined six pack. Proper exercise and fat loss, if you have excess body fat, are the two biggest things that are gonna help you see a more defined six pack. Like there's no way around that. I talked all about how to actually train your abs in a way that's going to make them more visible without having to lose as much fat in a previous video. So I'll link that down in the description box below. Pro tip, most people, like 98% of people are training abs very inefficiently. So check that video out if you haven't seen it already. It'll help you have more defined abs at a higher body fat percentage. And then when it comes to losing fat, I have an entire playlist on fat loss. So I'll link that down in the description box below as well. But calorie restriction and proper ab training are not the only things that are going to help you get a more defined midsection. So I wanted to give you guys some other things that you can think about, incorporate into your life if you're going after a more defined six pack or generally just a healthier lifestyle slash fat loss in general slash these will all also kind of help with muscle building these are just good tips in general honestly but i picked them specifically because they should help specifically with getting a little bit leaner here seeing a little bit more lines here so if you're excited to learn some tips on how to get more ab definition that have nothing to do with calorie restriction or exercise give this video a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button for future videos and let's get into it so one of the first things that you're gonna to wanna to focus on that has the potential to make a huge difference is your gut health. There is an intimate connection between your gut health, the aesthetic of your physique, and your performance in the gym. Studies consistently show that if your gut health is poor, you're more likely to store excess body fat, whereas if you have good gut health, you are more likely to have a leaner physique. Essentially, the balance of good bacteria in your gut is critical for modulating how your body absorbs and digests food. The better and more efficiently that your body can and absorb nutrients, the better it's going to perform, the healthier it's going to be, and the easier it's going to be to be able to lose fat and keep it off. Also, poor gut health leads to bloating. If you are bloated all the time, you're not gonna see your abs because you're just, you're just gonna have a distended belly going on. If you can fix your gut health and fix your bloating, then you're gonna be a lot more likely to see definition. Also, if you are getting bloated regularly, that does indicate poor gut health, which also indicates that something is going on in your body that is not optimal. and when things aren't optimal, that tends to slow fat loss. And there's a ton of other benefits to good gut health as well, like looking healthier, having clearer skin, having better focus. You'll also be able to build muscle easier. Like just focusing on your gut health is a good thing in general. But Marissa, how do I improve gut health, you may ask? Well. I have the answers for you. This could be a whole video in itself, so I'm just gonna hit like some of the key points. Number one, highly recommend incorporating probiotic rich foods and fermented foods into your diet. I have kombucha almost every day. One of the main reasons is to promote good gut health. These kinds of foods are full of healthy bacteria that will just help your gut function better. Next is make sure you're consuming prebiotic fiber to feed the good gut bugs that you are adding in with the probiotic foods. Prebiotic fiber can be found in a lot of foods like garlic, asparagus, bananas, artichokes, like just Google prebiotic foods and you'll find a ton of them. Also taking steps to reduce stress has been shown in so many studies to have a positive impact on gut health. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Sleep deprivation can have a negative effect on the balance of the good and bad bacteria in your gut. And then also avoid antibiotics whenever possible. Obviously sometimes they're necessary, in which case probably take them so you don't die. But antibiotics kill off all bacteria, including the good bacteria in your gut. So it's best to not rely too heavily on them if possible. This next tip is super, super important and something that is super easy to fix, but that a lot of people slack on, including me usually, and that is water. Yes, drinking enough like suppresses appetite, fills your stomach, makes you less hungry, etc., etc., etc. That's not why I recommend water. Honestly, that just sounds like you're using water to starve yourself, which is not what I recommend. Here's why water is super important. First of all, you die without it. That should be a good indicator of the fact that it's important. But when you're dehydrated, your body cannot properly remove waste and toxins. Water helps the kidneys to filter through toxins and waste. And when you're dehydrated, the kidneys store extra fluid. Also, when you're not drinking enough water, you can get constipated. You can get bloated. It can cause all kinds of digestive issues that will definitely get in the way 
of seeing more definition in the area where your stomach and intestines are, which is where your abs are. Basically, your poop's getting in the way of your abs. Also, without enough water, your body cannot properly metabolize stored fat and carbohydrates for fuel. So you literally cannot burn fat as effectively for fuel if you are not properly hydrated. The process by which the body takes fat and starts breaking it down is called lipolysis. And the first step in this process is called hydrolysis, which is where water interacts with triglycerides or fats to break them down and create glycerol and fatty acids. Water is key in that process. So drinking enough water is key to burning fat. There was a review done in 2016 that found that increased water intake led to increased lipolysis and increased fat loss in animals. Proper hydration also improves the efficacy and efficiency of your workouts. So whether you're trying to build the rectus abdominis to make it bigger so that you can see it better or lose fat by burning fat during exercise or just generally improve exercise performance as a whole, water is going to help you that. Proper hydration is critical for the muscles, connective tissue, and joints to move properly. It also helps the lungs, heart, and all the other organs function properly as you increase your exercise intensity. So what I personally recommend for water is minimum half your body weight in ounces. I know a lot of people throw one gallon out there. That's a very, very arbitrary number. You know, I'm pretty small. I'm 5'2". I'm a petite female in like a moderate climate where I don't sweat a lot. I probably need to be drinking a lot less water than like a 200 pound man in the middle of summer in Texas who's sweating a ton and is just generally a much larger human than I am. So the idea that everyone should be drinking a gallon of water makes literally zero sense. So half your body weight in ounces as like a starting baseline is a good place to start. But as I just pointed out, it's also going to vary based on how much you sweat, the humidity, the temperature outside, and a bunch of other factors. So if you're thirsty, you should be drinking more than that. If you're struggling to drink enough water, like I usually do, one of my best tips is to get a bigger water bottle. Don't just like fill up tiny glasses of water throughout the day. Get something that like you can fill up two, three, four times to hit your goals. Also, this is stupid, but it works for me. Drinking through a straw, I like suck down water. If I have to unscrew a lid and rescrew the lid every time, I drink about 20% as much. So like, find a lid that works for you. <laughs> this next thing is something that a lot of people overlook and also struggle with and has a huge potential to actually make a really big difference in the leanness of your midsection, and that is managing stress. When you're stressed, your body releases a hormone called cortisol, which a lot of people call the stress hormone. And if you have chronically elevated cortisol, this leads to increased fat storage and muscle wasting. So not only are you gaining fat, you're also losing muscle. That's like the last thing that you want to have happen when you're trying to get more defined abs or more defined any part of your body. But the negative effects of elevated cortisol go beyond that. Testosterone is a hormone that is so, so key for muscle hypertrophy. As I talked about in my how to get abs at a higher body fat percentage video, hypertrophy for the rectus abdominis is super important for seeing more defined abs. Therefore, being able to produce healthy amounts of testosterone is key to getting more developed abs. But here's the thing about cortisol. Cortisol acts in the brain to inhibit testosterone production. So if you have elevated cortisol, you have decreased testosterone, which means you have decreased ability to build muscle not ideal. But not only does cortisol lower testosterone, which lowers the ability in general to build muscle, it also negatively impacts your immune system. So your body is less efficient at clearing inflammation from muscle, which is part of the repair process, which is also necessary for building muscle. Chronic stress and elevated cortisol also throw your blood sugar way out of balance. We all know how bad insulin is for us and how it leads to excess fat storage. It also triggers cravings for high fat high sugar foods so if you're trying to not gain fat excess cortisol is going to make that very difficult for you there's just there's so many negative effects of having chronically elevated cortisol that make not only getting abs difficult but just being healthy in general very difficult now you might be thinking but marissa i'm always stressed i'm a student what do you expect me to do or my life is just very stressful what do you expect me to do about it well, here are some things you could do about it. In my opinion, one of the best things that you can do is have a weekly self-care routine, or at least time set aside for self-care every week. Self-care should consist of something that is entirely 
for you. Try to have at least an hour of time set aside for you to do something that is purely enjoyable and like not productive in any way, shape, or form. Read a book, binge watch Netflix, have a bath, do a face mask, whatever it is that makes you feel good. The second big thing to help manage stress levels is set boundaries. Lots of people are very bad about this. This could be an entire video series in itself. If you find it difficult to say no to people, you probably want to put a little bit of time and effort into boundary setting. Other things you can include to reduce stress that can take minimal time are meditation, breath work, journaling, a daily gratitude practice, taking a walk, getting outside and getting exposed to the sun and fresh air and nature, hugging your pet or another human. All of these things are gonna help reduce your cortisol levels and make it easier to have a slimmer midsection. Get those apps. My next tip is a diet focused tip. However, it is to add things into your diet rather than take things away. And that is to add in protein. Many, many studies have found that eating more protein is associated with a more favorable body composition and reduction in body fat percentage. One study in particular looked at over 22,000 women and found an inverse correlation between protein intake and waist circumference. So basically the more protein they ate, the smaller their waist was. A higher protein diet can also help preserve muscle mass as you are losing weight. This is something that happens to a lot of people when they're on a fat loss journey is they end up losing total weight, which results in losing muscle and fat, which means you just stay at the same body fat percentage, just smaller. Or some people even end up at a higher body fat percentage at a lower weight because they're losing muscle. Now, losing muscle as you're losing fat is non-optimal for many reasons, including it slows down your metabolism, which makes you a lot more likely to regain the fat and then makes it even harder to lose it again in the future. The second thing is that if you watched my whole video about how to get abs at a higher body fat percentage, you'll understand that building the rectus abdominis, like the this, group of muscles right here that is actually the six pack is key to being able to see your abs under your skin and under the layer of fat that is there. Building that muscle up requires protein and maintaining that muscle as you lose fat also requires adequate protein intake. Now I do have an entire video about protein, like how much you need to eat, all of the myths surrounding it, tips and tricks to get in more protein. So I'll link that down in the description box below, but just a quick summary. Most people do tend to think that high protein is a lot higher than it necessarily needs to be. Most of the research shows that you get the maximum benefit from protein when you eat about 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of lean body mass, not total body weight. Your lean body mass is your total body weight minus your body fat. And then two of my best tips to just increase your protein if you're struggling to get enough in is number one, plan all of your meals around a protein source. So before you sit down to make a meal, just be like, what is my protein source? going to be decide and then design everything else around that. And then one of my personal favorite tricks is to just have protein rich snacks that you can use as like protein sprinkles. So if you get like some jerky, you can just chop it up, sprinkle it on your dinner, sprinkle it on your breakfast, sprinkle protein sprinkles. You can also do that with like ground chicken, chopped up hard boiled egg, whatever you want to do, just sprinkle protein on things. Speaking of protein, I actually have some protein cooking up right now. Doing some slow cooker chicken breast. Super excited, gonna shred that up, let it cook a little bit more so I'm gonna have shredded chicken that I can just throw onto things. Last but certainly not least, honestly, this stands to be probably the biggest game changer for a lot of people. And it's something that you can do in your sleep because it's get better sleep. Studies have connected poor sleep to weight gain and a higher BMI for literally ever. The research shows that you start becoming more at risk for gaining excess fat when you start getting below about seven hours of sleep per night. Short sleep cycles increase the likelihood of obesity in children by 89% and by 55% in adults. So if you're slacking on your sleep, you're literally rolling the dice when it comes to your body composition. One study took 16 adults and had them sleep five hours a night for just one week. On average, they gained almost two pounds. Was it two pounds of fat gain? Probably not, but still two pounds of inflammation is still going to look like two pounds of total weight gain on your body. They definitely didn't gain two pounds of muscle 
from not sleeping enough. It's during sleep that your body actually puts your workout to use. Like if you don't sleep, your body can't repair, it can't recover, it can't grow muscle, it can't get stronger, it can't get faster, it can't improve performance. Those changes don't happen in the gym during your workout. They happen when you're asleep. Also getting enough sleep optimizes your workout performance. Like if you wanna get everything out of your workout, you wanna go into it with a good amount of energy. If you get only four hours of sleep one night and then go try to do a workout, it's not gonna be a very efficient or effective workout. So not only is the workout itself less effective, but you also can't recover from it. Like it's a lose-lose situation. Sleep also helps regulate appetite and blood sugar. It helps control cravings. It promotes better gut health. It helps regulate your cortisol, which we talked about earlier. It basically optimizes the body for building muscle and burning fat. So one of the absolute best things you can do to get more defined abs is just sleep more. Like aim to sleep seven to eight hours a night. And then secondary to that, you also want to have a regular sleep schedule, like trying to go to bed and wake up within like an hour on either side. If you've been following me for a while, you know that sleep is the thing that I struggle with the most. I am a diehard night owl. If I had it my way and didn't have to function in regular society, I would probably go to bed at like 4 a.m. and wake up at noon every day. But alas, I am an adult that lives in the adult world. And I cannot do that. So something that has really, really helped me prioritize my sleep, regulate my sleep, and make getting ready for bed at like a reasonable hour something that I actually genuinely look forward to and thus can do more consistently is having a nighttime routine that I really enjoy. So for me personally, about an hour to an hour and a half before I wanna go to bed, I'll take a nice warm shower, put my PJs on, and then I turn out all the lights in my room and I basically go by candle and Himalayan salt lamp. This effectively cuts out most of the artificial blue light that would otherwise be interfering with my sleep quality. Then I'll usually make a cup of tea if I feel like having a cup of tea, and then I have my time set aside for my self-enhancement activity. That's not an actual name for it. I just, that's what came to my head is the most logical thing to call it as I was thinking about what to call it. Basically time that I set aside to do something that I enjoy that I also feel like enhances my my soul, my person, me as a person. And basically this usually entails like reading something or actively trying to learn something. So I'll listen to audiobooks, I'll listen to podcasts. Some of you may not know this, but I am an aspiring screenwriter. So I will read screenplays or I'll do some sort of like online class that has to do with writing. Right now I'm actually doing a class on Skillshare called Writing Authentic Fiction, How to Build a Believable Character from an amazing author by the name of Saba Tahir, who's actually a best-selling fantasy novelist and I enjoy writing fantasy the most. I know I'm an absolute nerd, but I am loving her class. She actually references Harry Potter multiple times as examples for how to build characters. So like, you, you know that I am enjoying this class very much. So the last few nights as I've been drinking my tea, getting ready for bed, I have been going through this class and kind of using it as a template to help me build some of the characters that I am working on for some of my stories. I've done a couple classes on Skillshare so far and I have absolutely loved them. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of different classes for creative and curious people. It's a platform that makes it really easy to explore and dive into new things that you wanna learn about or develop existing interests. You guys know I'm an absolute nerd. I love learning. So any kind of platform that I can get on and just like absorb good quality information just makes me happy. And actually going back to my tip about stress, they have quite a few classes on like meditation, journaling, gratitude practice, and all of that stuff. So if you're looking for actual instructions for how to like hone in on that and work on your stress, highly, highly recommend checking out some of the courses on Skillshare. You don't necessarily need to build it into your nighttime routine like I do, but it's just a great platform to like learn, grow, explore, discover. So a big thank you to Skillshare for being a part of my nighttime routine and helping me learn so many amazing things, but also for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to check out Skillshare, the first thousand people to click the link in the description box below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. And after that, it's only $10 a month. So like, take advantage of it. It's gonna go fast. Go channel your inner nerdiness and learn all of the things. Nothing to lose, only knowledge to gain. So again, link in the description. First thousand people, free trial. 
get on it. And those are my top five tips to help you get more visible defined abs that don't have to do with exercise or calorie restriction. These are tips that you can implement at any point in your journey, regardless of how close you are to actually seeing ab definition. Like even if you're at 35 plus percent body fat, these tips will help you lose that body fat. If that's something you're trying to do, they'll help you build muscle, which will overall get you closer to seeing defined abs. I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions about abs or literally anything at all, leave them down in the comments below. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos from me about abs, you can check them out over here to see future videos from me, not necessarily about abs, but about health and fitness in general. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a video and I will see you very soon. Bye.